Life field and Euclidean space. In the last ch chapter, we focus on the real field. And before starting our lecture, we have some propositions we have to prove, and we're going to use it later when we are discovering property the properties of a uh, complex field. So let's just look at this proposition, and we're going to prove it. So basically, if x is zero, greater than zero, then negative x is less than zero, and vice versa. How to prove it? So x is greater than zero. That means zero is greater than this, right? Because if x is greater than zero, we add both sides. By negative x is equal to negative x. So it has 0 is greater than negative x. And vice versa. B. If y is less than z and you multiply by a positive number, the order preserves. So Z is greater than y, then we have z minus y greater than y minus y. So we subtract both sides by y. The order preserves because it's the order field. Right? And then you use part a. No, no, no. no not part a. You use the, the, the definition of ordered field. If this is positive, right, and x is positive, right, x is positive, this is positive, then we multiply them, and eventually you will get the desired inequality. If you multiply by a negative number, then the order flips around. So we have negative of x times z minus y is equal to negative x z minus y. And this is greater than zero. Right, because negative x is greater than zero, if x is less than zero. So, and by part b, we get this. And this, we get that x z less than x y. Okay, now I prove d. If x is not zero, then s squared is greater than equal to zero. So, if x is not zero, then x could be greater than zero, right? Then x times x, zero times x, could be zero. This is straightforward. You like you multiply positive number x on both sides. And if x less than zero. Then we have this times this is greater than zero. Since right by part A. Mm -hmm. And and we have now x squared is equal to this times this is equal to x times x equals to x squared. And since since one equals to one squared, 
we have one square equal x square equals zero. This is really important. The one is the additive additive identity. And this is the multiplicative identity. They're different. Right. So This is another way around. One is the multiplicative, and the zero is the additive. Additive identity. Okay. Now we've got D. The last thing is E. So to prove E, if um, we know Y is greater than zero. And if v is less than equal to zero, that means y v is less than equal to zero. And we know y times the multiplicate inverse is greater than zero. Y is greater than zero. We prove it. So we have one over y greater than zero because if one over y if this is less than equal to zero the v is the one over y if one over y is less than zero then we have then we're gonna have y times one over y a contradiction since one is greater than zero okay Also, also we have one of x greater than zero. So now, since x less than y, but they're all greater than zero, right? So we have we multiply both sides by. Yields. Okay, we're done. So we proved all of them, so we can use them when we need them. Now, we're going to introduce complex field. The definition of complex field is being defined as an ordered pair of fields. So the order means that if A is not equal to B, then A B is not equal to BA, right? Then, so we define addition and multiplication as like this. We define it to be like this. Then we could verify that the addition and multiplication defined above a set of complex into a field. It satisfies the field properties with zero, zero, and one, zero. This is zero and this is one in the real field. Okay. So the proof is straightforward. The interesting thing is to verify the existence of multiplicative inverse. That's the interesting thing. So we know that if so we prove it. If x is not zero. Then we have not equal to zero zero to at least one. One of A B not equal to zero. Which means that A squared plus B squared squared and zero. Because right here we see that if a number is not zero, then its square is greater than zero, right? And we just use it here. Okay. And 
now we we define the multiplicate numbers as a over a squared plus b squared negative b a squared plus b squared so we're not dividing by zero that's not zero we're not dividing by zero so we're good we're chilling here now we can just we just multiply it out using the rules this big ugly thing is equal to one zero equal to one so we have done the proof so now we know that the complex is a field okay so now we verify the addition motivation defined above in the field yes and we also have that this is true and this is true what this saying is that so we can construct a mapping like y from the complex field from the field into real as phi of a b maps into sorry a zero like all such elements like all such a zero you map it into a then such mapping is bijective right it is one to there's a one-to-one -one correspondence so it makes that the real field is isomorphic to our field which means that um, the addition and a the addition the addition and multiplication and a zero is like this the the uh, the operation it preserves which means like like this struct they have the same structure right so to a field that's a subfield of uh, our complex field so which we can regard R as sub field of C. So what it's saying is that okay, so if we let if we let S be like all such elements such elements right and we define a function r by phi of a0 equals to a then then phi of a0 plus b0 is equal to phi B zero, right? And is equal to a plus b. And a plus b is equal to phi of a zero plus phi of b zero. So we see phi of. So we see that. So we have phi of this plus this is equal to phi of this plus phi of this. And also the multiplication. Like this is like a definition of homomorphism. But when when phi is bijective, then phi is an isomorphism. That's like a, but anyways, we know that like their their uh, operation preserves right there. Like we could just say that the real number is like having a same structure, same uh, rules of operation as a subfield of C. So we may regard the real as a subfield of the complex.
Also, up to now we're not talking about the I. The I in natural, not in imaginary numbers we haven't talked about yet. And we will do it right now. So we define I to be this. I to be 0, 1. So with that being defined, we have I squared and equals to negative 1. Right? You just uh, perform the multiplication, you got this. And AB a, is equal to A plus BI. Yep. <coughs> and with Z equals to A plus BI be a complex number, we define a conjugate of A minus BI. And let A be the real part, B the imaginary part, we all learn. Like this is like high school content. Alright, so. Now we look at the propositions or properties of conjugates. So, A, A and B, they're like straightforward. C is also straightforward. We're only going to prove B here. So, Z times Z conjugates are real except, positive real except when Z is equal to zero. So we know Z times Z bar is equal to A squared plus B squared. And it's a positive real. Like, of course, because A, B are any reals, right? Except when Z is zero. When z is 0, then z equals to 0, 0, 0, i, right? Well, just 0. Okay, by part d, from the last theorem, part d, we can define absolute value of z, or like the norm. So we have, we define, we define the norm of z is equal to square root of z, z bar. Because we know that this is greater than zero in, in the reals. And by our last lecture about Archimedean property, we know that, um, there is because this is positive real, right? So Z Z bar is positive real real. And N is positive integer. So it exists unique um Y such that we proved this for half an hour, right? Such as Y and is equal to c z bar so in particular when n is equal to 2 when n is equal to 2 right we have then we have y equals to this in it this uh real is exists so we can define it like this and we denote this y as the absolute value of z right and we look at properties of norms here are they but I'm only gonna prove D and E so D prove D so if we know that A squared is less than equal to A squared plus B squared this is like trivial and we're taking square roots because they're all positive. Then we get A is less than equal to plus BI. A is the real part of Z. This is norm of that. It's like simple. From here to here, it's 
by definition. And put on D, and then we'll look at E. E is a bit trickier, so we want to show that we want to show this is true, right? So z plus w squared by definition, right? And by the properties. Which is equal to this two times real part of the w bar plus this. And now we if we take a look at here this one and here. We, sh we have the other keeps the same, but two Z W, right? Yeah, this is equal to. this one yeah we, we can we can just split them and this is like the conjugate doesn't matter when you're taking absolute values and this becomes uh, z plus w squared and they're taking just take square roots on both sides we have this is less than we have this is less than or equal to this which is this one mm. with that being proved we're gonna look at a famous inequality called cauchy schwarz inequality and we're gonna use this inequality to prove some properties inequalities and the uh, Euclidean space so we should prove this right now so if we let a equals to we should write a proof now so let a is equal to the sum of all this Right. B equals to sum of BJ's, the sum of F. Right. And C. Let this equal to the sum of AJ times BJ bar. Okay. So we want to show. So. One show that a b squared and equal to c squared, right? We have a is this, this is equal to this, b is equal to this, so greater than equal to this, this squared. This whole thing is equal to this. So we want to show this is true. Yeah. So. Um, if if b is zero, then every then all the bj's are zero, right? Because their norm is greater than or equal to zero. For any j. If 
which means that b equal, which means that which means that c is equal to zero, right? If all are zeros, then conjugate is also zero. So c is zero. So I have zero is greater than equal to zero, which is true. Now if b is greater than zero, b cannot be negative because you have sum of non-negative terms. It can't be negative. So if b is positive, we consider this. Consider this expression. B times AJ minus C times BJ. This is equal to uh, summation of BAJ minus CBJ. No, wait. Sorry, should be this times times the conjugate of this. equal to if you and now we since we know that a uh, b is positive b is a real number so like you can just basically it's equal to this minus this and b is real number so it doesn't matter right you can do it like this and this I just write it here is equal to b squared no is equal to if you expand this if you expand this is equal to b squared times this of a j squared minus b c bar a j b j bar minus b c J bar B J plus C square B J squared. Right, it's so ugly looking. Yeah, I know. And we apply definition. We use substitution. So B squared A minus B C bar is equal to b times a b minus c squared okay so this is non-negative so their summation is non-negative does equal this equal this equal this equal this so this is non-negative Right, but B is positive. Right, B is positive. So A B minus C. If B is minus negative, then the whole thing will be negative. It's a contradiction, right? So we have this greater equal to zero. quickly introduce the Euclidean space. So like the elements are like in tuples, right? Each are elements of R and define x plus y is equal to this and alpha x like this right it's like simple 
and we define the inner product by this and norm by this this expression so now we're going to prove the properties of the norms and we a a b c are like just straightforward you just do them but for d it's worth mention so we have the norm of x dot y so x dot y is a real number so this is the as absolute value of a real number is equal to x i y i sorry by definition right x dot y is this is this one yeah, so, yeah, okay, whatever number is that, and this is less than or equal to Source and quality. You can take a look. Because y is supposed to be y bar, but y bar is equal to y. It's supposed to be y bar, right? But y is equal to y since y is a real number. Yeah. You have Cauchy Schwartz. And now if we continue. We continue with this. We have this thing is equal to x i squared y i squared, which is equal to here the norm of x squared, the norm of x squared times the norm of y. So you have the desired inequality. And now if we move on to E, it's like similar to the complex field ones. Just prove it right now. So this is D. We should prove E. We have x plus y. This is equal to by definition, right? Dot this dot this norm of x plus y squared is equal to this dot this is equal to x dot x plus two x dot y plus y dot y. Now We use part D, x dot x. We use this one with y equals x, right? We use this, we also use this. Then we have two. These two are from, also from here, right? It's basically, basically equal to this, right? So we, so we have this, so we have this, right? Off, we got the desired inequality, and by f, by f, we'll take x equal 
to the x minus y and y we will let equal to y minus z so simple basically we let x this equal to x minus y and um, y we let this equal to y minus z so x minus z becomes like um, this this just true if you just changed like the rows right I think we're done
Thank you. 